All right, let's continue with some factoring. The very first kind of factoring you ever did was when you factored out the greatest common factor, the GCF. 15 and 3 have the 3 in common, and the x's have an x squared in common, so we can pull that out, divide it out. That leaves an x, and 15 divided by 3 is 5, and the x squared is gone, so that leaves that. Make sure that if you multiply this back in, you would get what you started with. Um, this one, they both have a 4. 8 and 12 have a 4. The A's, there are two A's, and there is one B. Um, and so when you take out the 4, you get a 2 left. 8 divided by 4 is 2. A cubed divided by A squared. B divided by B is nothing left. 1 left, if you want. 12 divided by 4 is 3. A squared divided by A squared leaves 1. B squared divided by B is B. And there you have it, the very first kind of factoring you ever did. Two special types of factoring. You have perfect square trinomials. Um, if you notice that the first thing is something squared, and the second thing is something squared, and then this is exactly twice of the two when you multiply them together, after you take them the square root, things like that. Um, I think it's easier to see this as an example going backwards. I'll show you what I mean. Difference of squares, very common thing. When you have something squared minus something squared, uh, you can factor it into the plus minus. The whole reason this works is that when you multiply this out, you get a squared, you get minus ab, you get plus ab, and minus b squared. That will happen every single time, as long as you have the plus minus. These are what we call conjugates. So, um, and so you end up with a squared minus b squared. Very common thing to see. This thing, the very same thing happens because you get an ab and an ab, so then you add them together, or they're both negative, and so you subtract them, and they're still negative. So, practicing some perfect square trinomials. So the good news is is that if you don't notice that it's a perfect square, it won't trip you up because the AC method still works on it. It'll just take you a little longer. So sometimes if I notice that 4m squared is a perfect square and 1 is a perfect square, I just try it. Um, I get 4m squared, I get 2m and 2m, which is 4m, and then 1. So again, if I notice that x squared is a perfect square, and 25 is 5 and 5, I just try it. Plus 5, plus 5. I get x squared, I get 5x and 5x, which makes 10x, and 5 times 5 is 25. Um, 2y and 2y. Square root of 4y squared is 2y, square root of 9 is 3. And so now, because this middle term's a minus, I want this to be a minus, so that I get 4y squared minus 6y minus another 6y, and then negative times a negative is a positive 9. A and A, because the square root of A squared, square root of 64 is 8. Again, because it's a minus, I'm going to stick a minus in there. And a squared minus 8a minus 8a gives us a minus 16a. Negative 8 times a negative 8 is a plus 64. All right, anytime you have two terms, you should look for difference of squares. Or if you can take something else out first. Something squared minus something squared. And so the square root of x squared, square root of 36. So this is very similar to perfect square trinomials, except this one we're going to do plus minus, remember? Because when you do this out, you get uh, x squared minus 6x plus 6x. Those middle terms will cross out every single time. So we get 2k and 2k, because the square root of 4k squared. Square root of 25 is 5. And you could do even do minus plus if you want to. Plus minus, minus plus, it doesn't matter because you can multiply in any order. 
um, square root of 81 is 9, 9p, square root of 49q, 7q, 7q, so plus, minus, minus plus. Again, remember, the minus is very important because you get negative 7 times positive 7 to get negative 49. Um, this one, we have to actually take out a 3 first because you say, hey, wait. And actually, let's take out an A as well. Take out a, an A, and you get A squared minus 16. So you can keep the 3a out front, and then a and a, and square root of 16 is 4. And that would be plus, minus. Same thing on the next one. We can take out a 2. That leaves a to the 4th minus 81. Um, difference of squares. You have a squared minus 9 and a squared sorry plus 9 and minus 9 it doesn't matter but sometimes when you're solving polynomials especially not so with quadrat quadratics because you'll you can only do this once but you can continue factoring because we have a squared minus 9 which is another difference of squares and so a plus 3 a minus 3. Notice that with the sum of squares we can't do anything, unfortunately. So we just leave that alone. And so x squared plus 100. Many of you, just like back here, would try to make this x plus 10, x plus 10. That's very wrong. Hear me out. Because you get x squared, if you multiply this out, you get x squared but then you get plus 10x, you get another plus 10x, and you get plus 100. So you do get your plus 100, but this middle term is not there. So that one is just prime. It doesn't work. Cannot multiply it out. And that's perfect square trinomials and the difference of squares.